as a kid, I thought everybody had a hot rod shop in their backyard, but uh, cause that's kind of what I grew up around. They built the garage there you see in the back, and that's where cars like the Vern Lewis Coupe, Jamie Musselman Roadster were built. So my dad was one of the key people early on that took the hobby of building hot rods in his garage and took it to the mainstream. He really helped define the billet wheel market and the sport truck movement. And you know, I'm carrying on the legacy, building wheels. In the 60s and 70s, there was a definitely an infrastructure there for racing industry and speed parts. But I think when it came to car customization and hot rodding, um, that was still kind of a you know, do-it-yourself, make-your-own-part um, industry. So when my dad started mass-producing wheels and started building all these different cars, that kind of legitimized everything. And you know, he took aftermarket products in a different direction as well. He quit his job over at Disneyland and jumped headfirst right into the hot rod business. And that's where my dad started Hot Rods by Boy. We're turning on to Monroe Avenue. This is where the first Hot Rod shop in Stanton was at. that my dad had after he moved, moved out of the back of the house there. A lot of the iconic Boy Coddington cars were built. Shazoom, Cadzilla, and he just said, he goes, you know, with all the, the work that we did into this car, he goes, I just hope people can appreciate all that we've done on this car. And it's one of the, you know, all-time customs ever built. The first CKs were lowered here. Uh, you know, the billet wheels, I mean, it just all happened right here at this shop. But uh, the uh, Swedish guys, some of the stuff we heard as little boys in that break room, ah, oh, man. It didn't seem like a rough area to me, uh, even though there were shootings in front of the shop. The city of Stanton's kind of done a, a decent job of cleaning a lot of the, the, the crap up. From the late 80s going into the 90s, there was a lot of things that converged that really helped hot rodding, helped my dad's career. Everybody in the hot rod industry knew who Boy Coddington was. All right, so this building right here is where the hot rod shop eventually moved to over here on Ashdale. This building right here was steering wheels and wheel assembly. It's not how I remember it, you know. My dad uh, took pride in, in uh, the way everything kind of looked and the cleanliness of it. Sometimes it seems like we had we had more people clean it up than we did actually work on stuff. But this wheel business grew larger than life, and it was uh, we got to, you know somewhere around 350 employees, cranking out hundreds of wheels a day. You know, Hot Rods by Boyd and Boyd's Wheels owned almost this entire city block over here in Stanton. For all the time I spent here and everything I learned from everybody, from my dad to just to my fellow employees, because. Um, I'm using all that knowledge every day, every day running my business right now, so. In the last few years with designing wheels, we've really incorporated the custom finishes in the design process. We got a lot of wheels that are designed strictly to have a certain a finish on it, and that's the way we show it. Some of these designs were also real simplistic because of the machining capabilities then, the software capabilities, all the tooling available. Um, you know, if you look at some of the new modern stuff that we do, there's a lot of surface area, um, a lot of 3D machining going on. There's five axis stuff that's, that's popular now. But we're excited about going back to some of the more simplistic designs, but creating them in larger diameters for a wider range of fitments now. So as you see behind me, here's a Deuce Ninja. It's in 24 inch. We originally produced that wheel in 17 inch. Um, that was really big in 92, and now 24 inch is, you know, if you're building a truck, 
Uh, that's, that's a 90s style theme. This is the best way to update the look, but still keep, you know, pay homage to the 90s in the sport truck movement. Uh, well, it was mid '90s. You know, the wheel shop was really taking off. Hot Rods by Boyd was really pumping out some good cars, and um, it was on the Americruise, I think, where my dad and Chip sat down and they had a discussion about doing a totally new, uh, you know, 32 Roadster. So Chip started sketching something out on a napkin, and it eventually became the Boydster. And you know, he took it to the Grand National Roadster Show, and actually in '96, he won the AMBR with it. Within a few years, you know, once 2000 rolled around, um, my dad entertained the idea of actually building a, building chassis and then doing a fiberglass body version of these cars. And uh, started building this ProRide chassis for them and kind of, you know, offered those as kits and sold those, you know, for a few years. And we were fortunate enough to uh, work on a Boydster One project that we labeled the SOB Boydster with our good friend uh, Vince uh, from Vinny's Designs out in Colorado. In 1996, I I first saw the Boydster One, and it was an amazing car, amazing build by Boyd. We're fans, Vince and I, of the early cars from the 80s and the 90s, you know, the early stuff, like the uh, Jamie Musselman's Roadster and Vern Luce Coupe and stuff like that. We wanted to pay tribute to that era, but we also wanted to do, you know, I wanted to use an opportunity to promote some of the stuff I'm doing currently with the Hot Rods by Boyd business. That's why I was thinking about just having, like, the bottoms make it more like a bench seat? The uh, shape of the Boydster was in pretty good shape. It was never really messed with after it left Hot Rods by Boyd. We got with Eric to go over a couple color schemes. I was always on the one side of mine being red. The Boyd red always had the look. So we tweaked it around a little bit and came up with our red. On this build him at the world to work with my dad building hot rods and building a project with this, with the Coddington family. Having my generation change it up a little bit, tweaking things around on the Boydster. Hopefully people will like it as much as they liked the older generations. Compared to a regular 32 Roadster, there's a, there's a lot of things that stand out about it. The uh, first thing is, there's no cowl, so the whole hood runs all the way from the grill shell all the way up to the wood shell. So on these billet chassis that my dad built, the majority of them out there were all polished. So we wanted to totally take a departure from that, pay tribute to the 80s and 90s where a lot of stuff was brushed metal. It was really important for me that we were able to upsize the wheels but maintain the same proportion. So we spent a lot of time uh, researching tires, looking for good looking tires, looking for wheel fitments. Different from the original Boyster, but we had a whole, you know, three inches more in the rear and we're two inches more in the front on wheel diameter. So it, that was important for me. So the stance is really close to the same. Really wanted to work with Recovery Room, who are really great at interiors. You know, my dad always used Gabe, um, but you know, uh, I feel like what we did was we, we modernized it a little bit, um, but we really paid tribute to some of the stuff you know that my dad would have done. Well, we're here in La Habra. This was the. Uh, Final hot rod shop my dad had before he passed away. You know, now I think it's split up between about four or five different businesses. Um, a lot of you probably recognize it from American Hot Rod, but uh, straight over here was my office when I we had the wheel shop here. Um, now here we are nine years later, and I think there's five different businesses in here. Actually, a couple of these guys actually uh, worked here at the hot rod shop um, there at the end just seems so huge you know it, and that was just one building I mean you had this whole building here we were doing hot rods in and this building back here was the whole wheel shop before we went to American Racing the wheel side of the business it was kind of it was new to me but I think it was new to the industry too which I think every wheel company offers a custom wheel and ordering process now but that was all new back then um, 
a lot of good memories here. A lot of crazy times with the TV show. Um, but uh, yeah, this is cool. Kind of sad too, because this is kind of where uh, it all ended. Life goes on and everything changes, but we're still working on cool stuff and just trying to carry on what my dad taught me.